Welcome back everybody. We got a good one today. We got the debut shoe for Devin Booker, the Nike Book One, and this particular version is called the EP version, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, but for now, let's get right into the video. Up until this point, Devin Booker has famously worn Kobe's all throughout his career. And you would think a debut shoe for Devin Booker would actually involve a lot of Kobe influence, but what you actually have is a lot of Nike lineage, a lot of Nike DNA kind of built into the shoe. And the reason for that is, as Nike has explained in their press release, is that Devin Booker has a particular love for car restoration and classic vehicles in general. And how the shoe actually draws inspiration from that is just like a classic car, these shoes are taking a lot of design cues from classic sneakers. The Air Force One, the Air Jordan One, the Nike Dunk, and then you got the Nike Blazer. Right from the start, when you look at the shoe, you can immediately see Air Force One, or at least I do. But enough of that, let's get right into the unboxing experience. Now, when it comes to the unboxing experience for the book one, it really isn't changing things a whole lot. Um, it does stay true to what Nike has done recently with some recent signature models, but what it does do is play a little bit on the name of the shoe, the book one, and makes the shoe box look like an actual book. More specifically, the back of the box looks like the spine of a book, and obviously this is the first chapter or the first book of the series, implying there's gonna be many more from here on out. Now, when it comes to the design of the Nike Book One, it is literally an amalgam of Nike design DNA. You have four specific callouts from Nike's press release, the Air Jordan One, the Air Force One, the Nike Dunk, and the Nike Blazer. Almost immediately when you look at the side profile of the shoe, you see Air Force One, or at least that's what I see. When you look at the swoosh, it's a Nike Blazer swoosh. When you look at the midsole, again, it's calling Air Force One to me. When you look at the tongue, that's kind of calling uh, an SB Dunk to me. It's very padded like one. The toe box itself is reminiscent of an Air Jordan one. And then the outsole is very, very obviously a Nike Blazer outsole with beautiful herringbone traction. Now the classic design of the Nike Book One was obviously intentional. It was supposed to be a multi-purpose shoe or multi-faceted shoe that you could wear on the court and play basketball in. And then when you're done, you can actually wear these casually and from a casual perspective, they look great. Um, and again, it has all those design cues from all those classic shoes. Overall, the design of the Nike Book One is a very refreshing take on what a basketball shoe can be. Overall, the storytelling elements are very small and minute. They don't get in the way of the shoe and overall the shoe itself is very clean. Now, when it comes to the materials on these, I was actually pretty surprised just because I wasn't really expecting any high end or high quality materials. Um, at $140 price point, I don't really have high expectations, although it is not a cheap shoe, it is also not one of the more expensive shoes like a LeBron that typically comes in at $200. But what you do have is, again, that buttery smooth leather or suede nubuck upper um, combined with like a cloth or synthetic sidewall that seems to be pretty strong and really good for containment, obviously. You also have a nice little touch of a leather hit on the heel loop. And then you have a very padded collar of the shoe, kind of reminiscent of an SB Dunk, along with a very padded tongue, again, reminiscent of an SB Dunk. All in all, the materials on the Book One are surprisingly good, and I was actually very happy with the end product. Now, when it comes to the weight of the shoe, they came in weighing exactly 15 ounces for a size 12. Now, for a guard-centric shoe, that is actually pretty average compared to what you see nowadays. Now, in my testing, I didn't notice if the shoe was any heavier or any lighter than anything I've tested in the past, so that is probably a good thing. If I'm noticing that the shoe is actually heavy, that is probably going to be a problem for a lot of other people. Now, when it comes to the fit, the sizing, containment, I wanna preface this section by saying that this is an EP version of the book one. Some of you may be saying, I know what an EP is, and some of you may be saying, I don't know what one is, and EP stands for engineered performance. Now, an EP shoe from Nike is usually sold overseas, and they're built in wider lasts, so it means that the shoe is actually gonna fit a little bit wider, and if you're a wide footer, you're probably gonna to want to look at EP versions of shoes, especially shoes that are traditionally narrow, like a Kyrie shoe. Now, the last thing that makes an EP shoe an EP shoe is that outsole. Now, on shoes that are sold in the US, they are sold with sometimes translucent rubber and things of that nature, like the book one that is sold in the US. This one has a translucent outsole, and for those who play on 
translucent outsoles. They generally don't have the same type of grip as for instance, a solid outsole. The Book One EP in this instance has a solid outsole and it's actually XDR or extra durable rubber. And that means that it's intended for outdoor play where it actually extends the life of that outsole versus a traditional outsole that would probably run down pretty quickly. Now with all that out of the way, the fit for this particular shoe, the Nike Book One EP, it fit incredibly well. And it reminded me of slipping my foot into a New Balance 9060. I was considering selling them. I decided to try them on and I was immediately blown away about by just how comfortable they were. They felt like they were already broken in, which is one of the most incredible feelings I've ever had for a basketball shoe. They had this immediate sense of comfort as if the shoe was kind of like enveloping my foot. And I, I hate to play it up or hype up the fit of the shoe, but specifically for the EP version, it just fit my foot perfectly. Um, it didn't feel like there was any real breaking period. So I got them on foot, started walking around in them, and I just felt this was one of the more comfortable basketball shoes I've worn in a very, very long time. Now, right from the start, they don't look like a traditional basketball shoe, but once you get them on the court, they play really, really well. In terms of containment, they keep your foot contained and on that footbed, there is a TPU sidewall that kind of keeps your foot contained on the footbed. You can feel it in the heel of the shoe if you're pressing down on, the, on that zoom bag, which kind of feels beefy in this shoe. You, but you're pressing on that footbed, you actually feel that TPU cage or TPU cup around the heel of the foot. Overall, I had no issues with containment. I had no issues keeping my foot in the footbed. They played really, really well. Cushioning in the Nike Book One was nothing short of great. Um, it features a full length Cushlon 2.0 foam, and then it has zoom in the heel. That tandem of cushioning provides a lot of court feel in the forefoot and a lot of impact protection on the heel of the shoe with that zoom bag. Overall, these played very, very well from a cushioning perspective. It was very responsive. When I played, I just felt the court. Even though the midsole seems a little bit thicker, you do feel the court quite a bit. And then when you're actually using your heels or you're pivoting or whatever the case may be, you can really feel that zoom back there. Traction on the book one was fine. It wasn't bad, it wasn't great, it was just fine. And by that I mean, I did have to wipe several times while I played in the shoe, but even then, when the dust began to build up on the shoe, it wasn't something that I immediately noticed compared to what I experienced with the Tatum 2, where the Tatum 2, even after wiping the shoe, I found myself slipping regardless. Now, when it comes to the traction setup on the Book 1, it is tried and true herringbone all throughout the shoe. There is no storytelling elements or anything like that. There are no gimmicks, it's just herringbone. Now, I wanted to round out this video with price considerations, and it's more so looking at the, I guess, pricing hierarchy of all of Nike's signature athletes. I'm not including Jordan Brand or Converse or anything like that. I'm talking about Nike specifically. You have the LeBron line coming in at the most expensive, usually every year, at $200 and all of its takedowns. You have Kobe's line, which is coming with their Potros, and I'm hoping maybe some new signature shoes coming from that uh, brand as well. Then you have the KD line, and then Price Rider KD is the Devin Booker line. And that kind of tells a lot about what Nike has planned for the future of the Devin Booker line, just because this starts off with a very fresh take on design. It comes with premium or more premium materials than its counterparts like the Sabrina Ionescu or the Ja One, the Giannis. All those shoes are great shoes in their respects, but they don't actually feature the same materials or um, out of the box design aesthetic as a Devin Booker. I say all that just because I think the Booker line is intended for much more than what we have today. Obviously they're gonna build it up and continue to invest money in design and materials. And I would assume that once KD is retired, once LeBron is retired, those lines are gonna continue, but Devin Booker might become the face of Nike signature athletes for the future. Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the Nike Book One, I can't recommend this shoe enough. Just based off of the price alone, $140, price is a little bit above some of the other signature athletes like Sabrina Ionescu and Giannis, but what you do get in return is a very, very solid shoe. You have great traction, you have great cushioning, great materials, 
and basically what comes together to make an overall great shoe. Now, if you manage to skip all the way to the recommendation part of this video, this is an EP version of the shoe. And what that means is it's a little bit wider in the toe box. So you have a little bit more room. If you're a wide footer, that's a very welcome addition. Um, you have a translucent outsole on the US version. On this version, you have a solid outsole, still herringbone traction. Um, and it is also XDR, meaning that it's a little bit more durable. If you're playing on outdoor courts, it should hold up pretty well. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed playing in this shoe. It was one of my favorite shoes to play in in quite some time. Um, so I definitely will be playing in these again. And from a casual perspective, I definitely will be wearing them as well. That just about wraps it up for this video. One thing I do want to ask is if you want to see a video comparing the Nike Book One EP, which is this version, compared to the Nike Book One US version, this one, leave a comment. Either way, if there's anything I missed or anything you want to know about the Nike Book One, leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a good day.